morning, I'm journalist Chloe Woody. And I'm journalist Eli Vick. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our morning prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day. For all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world, for the salvation of souls, the reparation of sins, and the reunion of all Christians, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father this month. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning and happy Monday. And so this week uh, on Sunday, we continued with the post-resurrection narratives. And the one that we heard for Sunday Mass is one that I think you've all heard already because we had it for a daily Mass on Wednesday. And that is the story about the disciples going to Emmaus. And so if you recall, there are two disciples, Cleopas and another disciple who isn't named, and they are leaving Jerusalem and they're going to Emmaus and their hearts are heavy with sorrow because of all the things that have happened, right? So they have seen Christ arrested, put on trial, crucified, and buried. And this seems like the end of his ministry, right? Death is the end. And so they have put so many hopes in him and now it seems like they face defeat just as he did. But at the same time, they have also heard certain women in their group, including Mary Magdalene, say that they have seen Jesus alive. Simon Peter has said the same thing. And so on the one hand, they're still heavy with sorrow. On the other, they're confused, probably a little bit hopeful. What if it's true? And so as they're walking alone, Jesus joins them and he begins to break open the scripture. And you may recall that they then arrive at their house, invite Jesus to come in, and he joins them at the table. They don't yet, yet know who he is. They don't recognize him. They're kept from recognizing him. But then at that moment, he breaks bread, and they notice, they see, they recognize that Jesus is sitting right there with them at the table. Now, I said at Mass, whenever we had this reading, that this is a kind of the, the, you know, the Mass, right? We begin by reading Scripture, and then we break bread, and it's when we break bread that we come face to face with the Lord. But there's other things that can be said about this reading, about this uh, story of the men on the way to Emmaus. One of the things that can be said about it is that they immediately begin to go tell other people about it, right? So they encounter the risen Lord, they know that he's alive, and they don't keep it to themselves. But they go and they begin to share just as it was shared with them by other people that they had seen the risen Lord alive. They begin to talk among themselves about what Jesus said about the scripture. And this is a preparation for what comes after. After that, after all of them have encountered Jesus, they will then be sent out into the world. And if you read the book of Acts, you see them as they go and they begin to proclaim boldly the risen Christ. No longer are they fearful. No longer are they hiding behind closed doors like they were for a little bit after the resurrection. But they go out into the streets and they begin to preach Christ risen from the dead. Right? And Peter, who fled from the crucifixion, all of them were terrified. There's no fear anymore, right? Because they've seen Jesus, they've received the Holy Spirit, and now they go and they continue Jesus's mission in the world of healing, of preaching. And they also continue to break bread. And I think that's an important thing for us to really remember. I was just recently in Rome, and in Rome you can go down into the catacombs where many of those early Christians would go and worship and pray when they were being persecuted, right? So they buried people out there but they also had rooms where they would pray in the presence of the martyrs, right? The martyrs were buried there, and so they would celebrate Mass. And on the walls of the catacombs, you'll see these ancient frescoes that are still there, kind of obviously faded with time, but they're still there. And what do you see on those frescoes? You see pictures of people sitting around the altar, breaking bread, doing exactly what Jesus did at the Last Supper, what he did on the road to Emmaus, and even what he did when he met Peter again on the seashore, right? There's another reading we've had recently where Peter and some of the others meet Jesus at the seashore and he breaks bread and he serves them food, right? They continue to break bread knowing that this is where Christ continues to make himself physically present. It's not just a metaphor, it's not just like poetry, right? But he's really there. And so the Christians have done that from the very beginning. And for us as Catholics, that's one thing that we have to share. They shared the risen Christ, we do too, and we share with the world the witness of the Eucharist. Many Christians might see it as kind of a uh, remembrance or as a kind of uh, reenactment or poetry, but we understand that Christ is really there. Right? This is one of the most important things that we can experience and tell people. But like the men on the way to Emmaus, we have to invite Jesus in. 
Right? That's one of the things that, that none of that would have happened if they hadn't said, come into our home, eat with us. And sometimes we can sort of go through the motions and maybe even receive communion, but never quite open our hearts to receive the Lord fully. And so we have to receive before we can give. That's what they did. That's what Christians at the beginning were called to do, Christians in every age, Catholics in every age. And so we continue the work of proclaiming the risen Christ, risen in our hearts, risen in, in, in really and truly, and uh, continues to speak to the world in every age through us, his church. May God bless you and have a wonderful week. Food Services Director Jeff Crowder has today's lunch menu. Good morning and happy Monday. Today's menu will be barbecue pork sandwich, french fries, coleslaw, and fruit. In sports, our conference winning baseball team plays its final home game of the season today with Mount Vernon Enola at 4.30 p.m. That's all of the announcements. Have a great day and go, go Bulldogs! Bulldogs.